Happy holidays, everyone, and welcome back. Toy Shiz here, and today I got three new action figures for us to check out, made by two very different companies, but uh, overall, pretty successful, I gotta say. And of course, this is based off the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. And first up is the Playmates Toys version. This is a previews exclusive. It won't be in, let's say, Walmart stores, Target, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. You can get it online. I'll put links down in the description below. But really nice packaging, really nice artwork. A very upscale, more adult version of what we've known from Playmates over the years with their classic Ninja Turtles line. And I'm definitely digging that. More on that in just a few. Here's just a bit of an info. Package design, all that great stuff. Here is the barcode. And keep in mind, there is a black and white version of this figure as well. Then we come to the NECA Toys versions of the last Ronin. Of course, these are going to be a little bit more high-end, a little bit more expensive. But more of that collector-friendly. Although, the Playmates Toys version is... Almost there. I gotta give it to him. Really, really nice artwork all over these boxes. The NECA Toys one is no exception. And on the back side of this one, this is the Armored Ronin. This is the last Ronin in all his armor gear. He's got all the weapons, all the accessories, really nice photos, yada yada. Here's a little bit of a write-up, pretty similar to the Playmates Toys one. There will be spoilers in this video, just FYI. We'll talk about it as we continue to look at all the figures. But here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure, so thank you very much for that. And here is the barcode as well. It's hitting various stores, and again, I'll put links down in the description below. And as always, in true NECA forms fashion, you get to open up the little flappy on the box, and you get to see the figure in a nice photo, yada yada. And then... We have the alternate version of the last Ronin. This is the unarmored. So we have armored and unarmored. Pretty simple, right? Uh, this could also be called the, well, I'm pretty much going to just do seppuku kind of thing. Last Ronin to get really dark on you if you haven't read the comic. But uh, yeah, he almost gets to that point. Same exact basic layout of the same box, right? Nice photos, a little bit of a write-up. Again, here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. Thank you very much for that. And then, of course, here's the barcode as well, and I picked mine up from Walmart. The other two, Playmates provided and NECA provided as well, and open up the box, yada yada, see the figure. Let's get these things open, right? Enough talking about the packaging. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. Maybe send this to your significant other. Like, hey, you know, just a heads up. Might want this for Christmas. Just saying. This is a look at the brand new The Last Ronin action figures by NECA Toys and Playmates Toys. And while I got a you last Ronins here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my Ninja Turtle videos. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you'll like. Now, enough jibba-jab. Let's talk about, well, this is the armored version of the last Ronin. And he comes with a ton of accessories. And I dig that. I like when a figure comes with a lot of accessories. It gives us a lot to talk about, right? So you do get a number of extra hands for this figure. You got closed hand, open hand, weapon holding. You get an alternate head portrait. This one is more of a, well, I'm upset. He's got those Ninja Turtle liver spots on the back. He's got the black bandana. The mouth is open. All the little creases, all the artwork. Black bandana comes off at the base of the skull, right? That's pretty cool. So you can swap them out, swap it out with the hood version, do the shorter version, what have you. You'd also get Donatello's bow staff, which is really done nicely. You get one of Leonardo's katanas, which, hey, it's got the sheath, nice sword, beautifully painted. Both of the weapons are pretty darn cool and can't complain about the sheath. You also get the Tonfa staff, more of a a futuristic kind of Tonfa staff, not the wooden kind of ones. You get these cool 3D goggles, goggles for the last Ronin. Nice elastic band on there. I'll show you if it's on over his head. You get the grapple hook, which is awesome. And I really like that it's just a brown string on this piece. Kind of reminds me of what I used to do with my old toys and everything else. But hey, NECA did it for me. You get one of Raphael's size, nice and pointy. Just be careful with the tip. You know what I'm saying? Then you get a grenade bomb, I believe. Nice silver paint little bit of a red little button right there, so that's nice to see. Very teeny tiny, don't drop it, as are the four ninja stars 
that you get. Nice silver, nicely done, very sharp. And then you get an alternate black piece of the headband so you can have it more of a, a drapey kind of look and one of Michelangelo's nunchucks, which is nice. It's got real chains and it's painted nicely because uh, yeah, this is, spoilers, this is Michelangelo, right? I think enough time has passed. We're gonna really get into this, but yes, the last Ronin is Michelangelo, and this figure, this figure's gorgeous. Look at the texture on it, just on the bottom of the feet, right, with all the, uh, the peg holes, and he's got double-jointed knees, all kinds of articulation for days. I like that the knee pads are different. It's very much a, just a perfect representation of what you see from all the different covers and the artwork and everything else for The Last Ronin, right down to the details, all the texturing, it's gorgeous. Very, very well done. Got weapons storage for days, all kinds of belt loops and everything else. Right here on the back is where you slip in the bow staff and the katana and everything. I did have to pour some hot water over these straps right there because they were mushed in because of the plastic, but they expanded and it was fine. You can see all the different weathering effects on the armor plates and he's got his hands and the gloves and... Yeah, really just a lovely looking figure, right? Right down to his head portrait. Now, this one is more of the grit and teeth. You can pull off the hood. It's a separate piece, which I do like the way that they did that. As you can see, it's where the bandana kind of slips into the back right there. You have a peg hole for this hood, and it slips right in there, and it stays on nicely. But you don't lose any of the articulation, right? So you still get left and right and up and down. So nice to see. I'll just remove it for the sake of moving him around right now, just so you can see the full effect. Overall, really nice inner swappable pieces. Like I said, you could put just the bandana part, so they're draping over his shoulder. Now, one thing with the articulation in these arms is I'm going to tell you, you might want to heat it up at the shoulder. The double jointed elbows, no problems. Wrists, no problems. Nothing stuck. But right here, just go really easy. Nothing I have to say that I thought was going to snap. You know how we always talk about with Naked Toys? We're like, yeah, just heat it up, go easy, which I'll tell you all day. It's probably always the best bet. But nothing felt like it was going to break. It's just very stiff, right? So right here, you do get a bit of a turtle ab crunch. You get a little bit of a waist swivel. And the legs will, you know, the kind of kick out. You don't get much in the sense of that, he's got double jointed knees and he's got some nice articulation in the feet and his sandals and everything's painted nicely. So again, great representation for the last Ronin Michelangelo. And I love that he has so much weapon storage. So again, put the katana in, you can put the bow staff, you can decide where you want to kind of put stuff, right? Not exactly the weapons provided that you could exactly recreate, let's say, from the original cover. You can't really put the tonfa anywhere, but you pick and choose, do what you want. That's part of the fun. You can even put Raphael's Psy on the front side as well. So front, back, or put the grappling hook. You know what I mean? Lots of different options. He does hold all the weapons beautifully from all the throwing stars and the mini bombs, and he holds Raphael's Psy just like you would expect in Ninja Turtle 2. And the goggles do go on his head, I would say try and use the elements of the bandana to kind of keep it down because it does want to just flip right back up. It doesn't have any form-fitting technique. It just kind of goes whoop. So again, I'll reiterate, if you're a fan of The Last Ronin, I think you're definitely going to like this action figure and probably one you're going to want to pick up for this holiday season. Now, going from NECA Toys to Playmates Toys, we have their version of The Last Ronin, and it utilizes the old-fashioned style of the original Varner Studios, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I couldn't be happier. He comes with a pair of nunchucks, solid black with little wrappings on them, nothing in the terms of a real chain, just go easy on them. You come with a pair of Raph's size, which do look good, nice brown paint and silver. You do get Donnie's bow staff, it's very shiny bow staff, I gotta say, and you get Leo's katana. Silver, you got blue, and then you get a broken version of Leo's katana. If you've read the comic, then yes, you know all about that. But uh, I like that they included that. Now, this right here is just a grappling hook accessory. You can't undo it. It's just one solid piece of plastic. No paint on it, but it does have a little peg hole to fit on his belt. You get two versions of throwing stars which is always nice to see. Very teeny tiny, and again, just don't lose them because you got a really cool looking Last Ronin Playmates Toys Ninja Turtle figure here. I'm, I'm actually blown away because I have been wanting Playmates Toys to do something like this for so 
long. I've been kind of uh, looking at their stuff recently going, come on, Playmates, I know you got this. He's got double jointed knees, he's got double jointed elbows, he's got huge peg holes on the bottom of his feet. Go figure, but he's got foot articulation and everything looks like they took the original Turtle Toys and now have brought them into 2022. And I think that's what a lot of us collectors have been wanting. They've kind of done the He-Man Origins thing. Look at all the articulation on this guy. He even has wrist swivel, right? So it's more of a five-inch figure in the original Ninja Turtle style. And I could not be happier. It's bringing back all the feels while doing something new. Now, they have done the weapon storage in their own way in a more toyetic kind of vibe as opposed to a really restrictive spot-on collector vibe. But I dig that. I think that that is cool. And the top right here of his hood is all one plastic piece. But you do get some movement out of the head still. But it doesn't come off unless you want to yank the head off. But I'm not going to be doing that. And like I said... He holds all the weapons beautifully. You got two nunchucks for him, two sides. He's got more weapons, like doubles of each of the Ninja Turtles weapons, plus a bow staff, plus all this other stuff. It all works. It all looks great. I really like what they did here. So I'm telling you, Playmates Toys, if you're listening, keep this up. This is what we want to see. This is what I want to see. You don't really have any places to store, let's say, the throwing stars or the nunchucks. Just FYI. But everything else, that's a solid home run. Definitely a must-have for Ninja Turtle collectors. Now, when all the armor has gotten out of control and you need to let your turtle hair down, well, you can go the more unarmored NECA Toys version of the last Ronin Michelangelo. And I'm going to tell you right now, this guy is more of an accessory pack in many, many ways. And you do get a figure with it. And I'll explain why? First and foremost, you get a ton of extra hands, and you can use them with the other last run. So you can interswap all the pieces, the parts, the head portraits, and yeah, don't be surprised if you get a little paint that kind of rubs off on you. Now, this is pretty cool. You get Splinter's Journal, which is nicely done. It doesn't open, but it's just very cool to see. That's a nice little packing accessory right there, straight from the last Ronin. You do get another one of Michelangelo's nunchucks, so now you have two if you have both figures. You get a broken version of Leonardo's sword, which leads to a pretty dark moment, right, for Michelangelo, just saying. And you get this updated Robo Mouser droid robot, which is totally cool. He doesn't move, he doesn't have any articulation at all. But again, straight from the comic, and that's a really cool pack-in. You do get the alternate head portraits. You get the long bandana. Same deal. You can pull this out, swap them out, do whatever you like. But in totality, you get four head portraits between the two turtles. You get another one of Raphael's size. So now you have two Psy. And you get these really cool throwing barbs, whatever they may be. You get four of them. Don't lose them. <laughs> you get another Tonfa. So now you have two Tonfas which is nicely done. I do wish that this kind of disassembled, though. That would be kind of cool to put it on his belts. And then you have the unarmored Michelangelo. And I'll tell you right now, out of the three, this one is kind of on the bottom. Not because there's like, oh, man, they did this or did this. It's just kind of like, yeah, it's not all that exciting, but it is integral to the collection. I like what they did with the shell and all the paints. It's very well done. The lower bottom half is pretty much just the exact same figure as the armored Ronin, and then you have the top half, which is all the newly turtleized kind of thing. I don't like the way they did the arms right here, though, with the double jointed. It goes from a solid bicep. It just looks like there's something missing. Like he has gummy bear arms. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense, like claymation on robot chicken. But you do get enough rotation and momentum and articulation out of them. It just looks kind of weird. And I like the point in hand right there. That's pretty solid. The paint is great. And like I said, don't get me wrong. The articulation is what it is. It looks good. Not really much you got to heat up on this guy. Really didn't have any problems until I hit the knees. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. He does have more of a say in ab crunch than the armored version. And in talking about the knees right here, if you wanted to put him on his knees to kind of recreate that one scene with the seppuku and all that kind of stuff, my joint is frozen. So... I tried everything to kind of get it unstuck. Now, the accessories bring him to life, right? You get a little bit more to do with this figure, have him holding all the weapons. But again, it's just kind of like, yeah, that's a cool looking figure. But I kind of like the armor version a whole heck of a lot more. This guy is the accessory pack 
and it comes with a figure as far as I'm concerned. However, the one caveat is that while he does come with Splinter's journal, he really doesn't come with any hands, whereas the armored version does. So you get what I'm kind of saying there. And in terms of scalature, right, and kind of looking at, well, what's come before and everything else, does he match up with anything? You can kind of put him with the movie Turtles, although this is supposed to be a what-if sort of future for the Ninja Turtles. I know a lot of people say, oh, no, it's canon, it's canon. Well, there's been a lot of different futures for the Ninja Turtles. This is just another one, so, yeah. In between, let's say, the cartoon TMNT and then the Universal Monsters, he's right in the middle. Kind of reminds you of Slash, right? With the black bandana a little bit. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a good aspect. And to say that the original Mirage, this is supposed to be a kind of sort of what-if future for them to go from this to that, you get the idea, right? It just, it's like its own line, so we gotta wait till they kind of do more. But again, I'm telling you, Playmates Toys, the scale between this last Ronin and the original Michelangelo totally makes sense, totally works. Please do more of this. Let's see a home run just going forward. So, uh, yeah, that really does work. Awesome job. Can't believe it. But I got to tell you, in all the future speakings, uh, my future for the Ninja Turtles will always be in the Archiverse. I really like what they did there. I like the one-eyed Raphael, and then, of course, the Cyber Samurai Ninja Turtles. I don't like all the grim and dark stuff, right? Every single superhero in Star Wars and everything else always has to fail and everything else. I don't like that. Let's keep it cheery. Let's have good endings. You know what I mean? No, that's just my two cents. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new The Last Ronin action figures by NECA Toys and Playmates Toys. And of course, you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything The Last Ronin. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, let's see, we got the movie line, the cartoon line, the video game line, the Archie line. Heck, now we have the last Ronin line. <laughs> Nega Toys, you're really doing a great job with the Turtles, through and through. And Playmates, again, it's really nice to see a true return to form. This is great. Keep it up. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Mm -hmm.